topic is Laplace transforms. Um, and I'm going to start by giving a general overview. I'm going to skip over um, showing you why some of the things work um, so that we can get to a differential equation that we don't know how to solve yet. Um, and then in subsequent videos, um, we may kind of go back and uh, calculate some Laplace transforms um, and show why they work, um, or at least why some of the properties are true. Um, it's a little bit disappointing. A lot of the problems you're going to be solving on WebAssign um, are differential equations that we already have other methods of solving. Um, notably, the method of undetermined coefficients can solve um, any um, second order uh, linear differential equation uh, where everything on the left has constant coefficients. Um, a lot of the problems are that, um, so we already have other ways of solving them. Um, it's not very interesting. Um, I am going to show you uh, one differential equation that uh, we don't already know how to solve. Um, and uh, we can figure out how that works. Um, the Laplace transform is a little bit like uh, the linear operator scenario, um, a little bit clunkier to work with if the differential e equation is complicated, um, but it's a more universal technique. Uh, so you don't need the problem to be in a super specific format in order to use it. All right, so bear with me a little bit on this definition. Um, it's a little bit mysterious at first. Um, so given some function f of t, we're going to define some other function f of s, which will denote L curly brackets f of t. Um, and this is the Laplace transform of f of t. And we're going to define this as the integral from 0 to infinity. So this is an improper integral e to the negative st f of t dt. So what happens when you integrate this? Um, the t's will go away after we put in the bounds, um, and this will just end up being a function of s. So we've changed the variable from t to s. It's some other function that's related to the original function, um, but usually looks nothing like it. A um, couple things to note, this is an improper integral. Um, so if you remember from integral calculus, this is defined as uh, the limit as a goes to infinity from z of the integral from 0 to a, e to the negative s t f of t dt. You don't necessarily have to write this step, um, but the thing to avoid writing, like if you integrate this, for example, you, you end up with e to the t and then you're plugging in bounds, right, 0 to infinity. You don't have to write the limit, but don't write e to the infinity. That's not a thing. This, this is not defined. You can't take e to the power of infinity. You can take e to the power of a and then take the limit as a goes to infinity. Um, that's fine. Um, but in general, don't start treating infinity as numbers. Um, use the limit or not. You can skip those steps if you want. Um, it's up to you. Okay, um, we have the definition of the Laplace transform, and then um, we have a way of doing Laplace transforms in reverse. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be starting with a differential equation. If we take the Laplace transform of both sides, and the Laplace transform is going to be linear, just like the linear operators, so it'll be nice. Um, this will turn into a, basically an algebraic equation, so a, a not differential equation. Um, and then we can solve for f of s. The original goal is you have some differential equation you want to solve for little f of t. We're going to be able to solve for big f of s, and then um, we would like to be able to take the inverse and get backwards to little f of t. Um, there are fancy methods for taking the inverse, which are uh, beyond the scope of the course. Um, so we're just going to be using a Laplace transform table. That's how we're going to take the inverse. So I'll show you what the table looks like. Um, this is from the textbook. So here's my copy of the textbook. Um, the link to Heather Lee's lectures also has um, PDFs. So if you don't have the textbook, um, you'll be able to get these, or just find one online. Um, so uh, here's here's our functions, f of t. Here's the Laplace transform. So like the Laplace transform of the function, the constant function 1 is 1 over s. Um, 
the Laplace transform of the function um, t to the p, as long as p is greater than negative 1, is uh, this ugly function. I don't know actually what the gamma function is. Um, they've made up some functions in calculus to take the place of that. They do this a lot with integrals. Um, how about this? The uh, Laplace transform of sine of a t is a over s squared plus a squared, as long as s is greater than 0. Um, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be solving for the Laplace transforms. We're going to be finding functions in this list, and then we're going to be going backwards and finding a function in this list um, to be the answer or the solution to our differential equation. Um, and in order to for sure be able to do that, um, we also need this property, and that's if f and g are continuous functions. Continuous is the easiest version of nice. So this is good. This, this is pretty powerful. It's, uh, continuous functions are easier to get than differentiable functions. Um, and the Laplace transforms are the same. Then f equals g. And so what this gets us is uniqueness. This means if we take the Laplace transform of a differential equation, we don't lose information. We can solve for the, the big f of s, um, and then we can get a unique answer for little f of t. And so that's good.